Every hero needs a villain. In their search for the mask of creation, the Toa must face enemies raised from the dead. This is Bionicle Week, the resurrection of evil. Day 2, Skull Slicer. Hello, this is Santa out here, and welcome back to Bionicle Week, the resurrection of evil. Day 2, where we'll be taking a look at Skull Slicer. Now, Skull Slicer is a four-armed skull villain, set number 70792, and is 71 pieces. A lot less than Skull Warrior. But he does have a four geared four armed gear function, which is pretty neat. This box is really nice. Here is his comic showing him fighting Liwa, Master of Jungle. Pretty cool overall. Really, really neat. I do like the packaging to this day. I think it's still great, even after all these months of seeing it. And especially when looking for the skull villains, I saw Wave 1 a lot. But overall I think the packaging is still really, really good. So here is Skull Slicer. He is very thin. Uh, he is skeletal beyond skeletal. But he has a nice consistent color scheme for the most part. As you can see, he's got, you know, the regular bones. But he's also got these transparent green pieces, which are really neat. And I think it kind of adds to these are resurrected uh, from dead. And they, you know, probably are a skeleton that's been put together further with some kind of mystical energy. You get that really cool rib cage piece again. It's really intricate chest design. Again, the one orange shoulder pad thing I'm still not getting. Why couldn't it be this color and then it would have matched better? Um, also, one shoulder pad. It's, again, the whole resurrected thing. He probably didn't have all those parts. Also, of note, he has these standard feet, but they do have an additional peg. But it is a red pin, and it really could have been a black pin. Um, but that is there on the side to give him more stability. Unfortunately, he really needed more backward stability not really left and right stability. But looking at Skull Slicer here, he is probably the most articulated Bionicle set of the year because he has extra arms. So he gets ball joint head, shoulders, elbows, wrists, shoulders, elbows, wrists, shoulders, elbows, wrists, and shoulders, elbows, wrists, as well as the hips that are the standard. So he has the standard articulation, but he just gets extra with his extra arms. Let's talk about his mask. His mask is the most boring mask of the wave. I honestly have no idea why, but it is just a standard Skull Spider mask. This is the Silver Skull Spider, no difference, just missing the legs. I already own 14 of these Skull Spider masks, I now own 15 of them. This is, this is a lot of Skull Spider masks. I really think he should have had something different. He did get a different look to him in the animation. But yeah, it is just a standard Skull Spider mask. I'm sure there's some story reason we'll find out about later. Maybe. But that's pretty much it. Let's talk about his weaponry, though. Because he does come with three mask-stealing blades. These are the blades at the end of the mask-stealing staff for Warrior. And he does have those here. But they're not really used as a mask stealing gimmick on this one. It is more of just weapons. In fact, the mask stealing gimmick is this really cool claw. It is transparent orange, which kind of makes me wish this was in that hand, but it is officially in this hand. And you can see that it has two skull spider legs as claws. And this grabs masks, and he can rip them from the faces of Toa. So you just give him the handle here and insert that in and you're good to go now if you get his arms all positioned correctly his gear function works super well sort of his arms do clash into each other but the bottom two arms move in the same direction and the top two move in opposite directions but you get that fun thing going on in fact let's move this arm out of the way further and we can yeah we can get all kinds of mixed up it's really neat how it works, and it's a fun build, um, but yeah, it's a little bit of a mess to uh, actually use because of all the weapons. But overall, really neat. Really, really neat how he does have four arms, and they all are on gears. They could have just done two, but they did all four, which is really cool. But let's talk about that mask stealing gimmick. So you have to manually affix his claw to a mask, but once you do, you can just be able to move the arms and rip it straight off probably pull down the guy he's trying to pull down with him. But yeah, 
Now he's got Liwa's Golden Mask. Now that Skull Slicer has Liwa's Golden Mask, maybe he'll try to put it on. Skull Slicer is not the true owner of this mask, and therefore, it becomes corrupted. The corrupted Liwa mask looks really cool and harkens back to old Bionicle, where not only did Liwa get an infected Miru, he also was taken over by Akrana, by the Borok. So, kind of neat. But as you can see, it is partly transparent green. It looks really, really good overall. And actually really matches the color scheme of uh, Skull Slicer here quite well. Overall, I'm really digging the Corrupted Masks. I hope every single Toa gets one. Overall, I really dig Skull Slicer. There's a lot of post-ability options with him. Yes, his function does get in the way, and he is low on parts count. But overall, he's pretty cool, and I really think he's a neat set overall. I know a lot of people do say that he is the worst in the series, and some people say Skull Scorpio is the worst in the series. Well, maybe we'll just have to take a look at Skull Scorpio next, and, you know, we'll see what I say. Definitely recommend Skull Slicer. Really neat set overall, and, you know, even though he doesn't have as many parts as some of the others, he does have the four-armed geared gimmick, plus he is quite tall. So, really neat overall. That is all for Day 2 on Bionicle Week, The Resurrection of Evil. Stay tuned for tomorrow, we'll be taking a look at the Skull Scorpio. Also, be sure to stay tuned here on Soundout 12 for three videos a week. Model Kit Monday on Mondays, Soundout's Toy Chest, the Mystery Review Series on Thursdays, and the Soundout Review on Saturdays. And also be sure to check out Hirotaka.com for all your Bionicle news and more. Till next time, this is Soundout saying goodbye.